just gone six o'clock and Patrick, Patrick Roberts is a talented violinist who's uh, just put out an album called Vision and proceeds are helping Vision Australia. Patrick, uh, thank you for your time. Good afternoon, Peter. How are you? We're going very well. Um, why did you decide to help out Vision Australia with this album of Vision? Well, originally it was an idea that uh, a really close friend of mine, Lauren Nicholson, a uh, blind guitarist that I met um, at Carol's Bell Candlelight when I performed solo there, um, he and I sort of had a bit of a discussion about, you know, doing an album that would, would uh, have proceeds going in. I thought about it a bit afterwards and it was just a wonderful idea because since uh, performing at Carol's last year, I've had a bit of a connection to Vision Australia and found out some of the things they, they do to help the, uh, the blind and vision impaired. It's just wonderful. And Lauren's a pretty impressive young man himself, isn't he? A uh, wonderful guitarist, yeah. as you mentioned, and uh, well, does lots of other things, including uh, cycles uh, halfway around the world, literally. Yeah, no, he is. He's a real uh, man of many talents. <laughs> now, um, as far as the album's availability goes, how can people get hold of it? It's in, uh, available at all good record stores. So, I mean, it's, it's prominently in every single JB Hi-Fi. They can pick it up at Readings, at Thomas's, um, all the stores and major outlets that have albums for sale. Um, it's also available on iTunes as of Monday. Um, but, yeah, every single record store it's uh, accessible through. So. Patrick, tell us about your career. You started playing violin at the age of eight? Yes, yeah, I wanted to start when I was uh, six, in fact, and um, my parents said, look, wait for your age, just so we can be sure, and I guess they, they're pretty happy now. <laughs> it was one of those journeys that, I guess, for me, I never really knew what age would be the best one to start at, but when I was really young, it, there was an attraction to the instrument that I, I had to sort of begin immediately, and uh, from the age of eight was my first uh, lesson, and then I never looked back from there. So did you see someone play it, hear someone play it when you were six that you thought, yeah, I want to do that? Yeah, pretty much. I, I was always watching TV and listening to radio and, and constantly attracted to, you know, Baroque sort of music. And I loved, you know, Vivaldi and Bach and, and, and even listening to Beethoven and, and other other uh, wonderful, um, legendary composers of the, of the old times. And um, it usually just was an instrument that had a mystique about it that I couldn't really fully explain. I mean, the, the guitar, the piano all didn't really do much for me in the way of, you know, an attraction where the, the violin had something about it that I guess my mind just, just kept thinking about it. And then uh, when I started lessons, I, I really get into the world of music that way. So, And uh, was it just something that you were good at straight away? Because, uh, you know, I guess if you can't play it, it can sound pretty awful. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right. There's, there's a certain, look, it's, it's noted as the hard, or you could say the hardest, but one of the hardest instruments to play, to master as such. And, um, I guess when you start playing the violin, it's, it's, it's really about listening. Uh, I guess for me, there was a lot of listening involved and, and, uh, and, and mimicking. I used to, you know, spend a lot of my time off other kids were outside playing. I'd be inside with, you know, some of the, the classical music albums on here, you know, records back then, and having them on and playing violin to them and trying to mimic what I was hearing, even, you know, on my first, second, third lessons, you know, there was no um, structure of my, my tuition at first. But then as it started getting harder, I found that I was I was quite good at, um, you know, starting to enjoy the aspect of, of the learning process, which I guess some people, when it gets hard, they, they can stop, and that's the danger about the instrument. Mm. Did um, did you think uh, I'm good at this straight away though, or did people think that you were pretty good at it straight away? Were you, you know, like I say, might like to say a natural at it? Well, you could say that there was a bit of a knack there. I mean, there, constantly we'd have visitors, and aunties, and friends and family around. I'd always jump in front of them and do a concert. There was never an instance in the in the Robert's household that I wasn't doing some sort of performance. And I found that just I was I was great at, at presenting pieces, and there was a natural flair for the violin itself. And uh, many people did notice that, and that's when I, I guess the, the performance career as such started from such a young age. I was performing from there on, you know, stages just all over the place, even when I went through uni um, after that. It, was, it, just, it just kept going. Was it hard to find a violin teacher? I, I learned from uh, someone that, that we found back, back when I started, but the, back then they, they were still very scarce to find, you know, good teachers. And I took a lot of... Um, you could say uh, ideas of, of a lot of my teachers I've learnt over the years and, and they've all taught me something independently which I'm really grateful for and now we're in a different world of music you know there's lots of different sort of you know, attractions going and, and singers and guitarists and things in the, in the media but I find that I, I take a lot of my um, my uh, ideas off, off the other violinists that have you know come in the past like people like Ben May and even Yuri Menuhin and Yasha Heifetz and some of the greats of the past um, that have definitely left their, their print in time Maybe a silly question Tell me so if it is, but um, did it uh, affect your relationships with people, the fact that you were playing a violin? Were you maybe seen not to be that cool? I mean, that's probably not no. a... No. 
No, no, I, I actually found it was the opposite. Okay. I guess it depends how you you, you uh, sort of learn it or, or present it or live with it, you could say. Um, some some people, when I was growing up, uh, used to say to me, you know, what instrument do you play? And expecting me to say, you know, the drums or something a bit more, um, you, you know, regular that other people play. But when I said the violin, I guess a lot of people found it quite interesting. I mean, it's, it's a unique instrument in itself. It's not something that a lot of males sort of tend to... Take up. I would say it's more of a female instrument, but it, it was never something I was ever mocked upon or anything at, at high school. Where I guess it was a, a coolness I brought it because I used to found it, find it so interesting and tried to make a lot of other people understand why I loved it so much. And I, I didn't want to ever blend in, so standing out of the crowd definitely made a difference. If there's a lot of females playing it, it might be a good reason for a male to take it up. <laughs> <laughs> what about some of the tracks on your album? Um, you've got yep. uh, Lauren um, accompanying you or... Uh, yeah, being part of the, some some of the tracks on the album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He um he basically the, the main project we had for this album was uh, a beautiful piece of music called Ave Maria, um, Bach uh, Bach's version of Duno, and that was um, an album. Sorry, a track that I I wanted to do with the National Boys Choir that I used to sing with when I was twelve. Um, so the, the main project was that, and that's what Lauren was going to play with me on. And then as we got into the studio with the other band members and my you know my my backup band and, and special musicians, we all sort of thought, look. Lauren here, it's getting to play some of the most other songs that I found, some of the most greatest ones I've got on there, like a beautiful piece of music called Concierto de Arajuez by Rodrigo. And that's a, a beautiful song that was actually originally played, funny enough, by a blind guitarist that was composed by. And, um, and I found it was just so, such a perfect, uh, song for Lauren to really, really add his magic touch to. And he, he did play on nearly most of all the tracks now. Sure. Um, there's a few that he's not on, but, um, he definitely has added his flavor throughout the entire album. And do you get a buzz out of that playing with someone who, uh, I guess you, you, you could sort of uh, be in sync with you know, musically, like your musical souls sort of meet? Yes, I, 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 I do. Look, Lauren, I did not know him at all until I stepped foot on the stage at Carol's by Candlelight and I saw him there getting set up on the stool there with people around him and I heard the name and I did not know what to expect and I didn't know certainly the talent I was about to expect. And uh, when we played together, I guess the, the second my bow hit the string and he kept plucking the, the strings there and started accompanying us with uh, the first Noel with Christy Whelan, of course. Mm. Um, there was a certain musical touch I think he has with the guitar that I found he's got a lot of great musicality flowing through him and he can just improvise so easily as well. And I found it a very unique instrumentalist. And to be blind, it's just, I, I find it just amazing. And uh, the name of the album, Vision, is that not, yes. is that not coincidental? Uh, no, that was, look, that was the reason why. I, the whole project was based on, on donating funds to yeah. in Australia. And being that, you know, the, the album was called that, I wanted to actually call it a, a, a name that for me meant two things. I mean, obviously it's a, uh, first and foremost, for me, it's a, it's a vision going forward as well. Uh, and then secondly, for the, the donation to Vision Australia. Because the album has changed a bit since my previous albums. Um, the previous ones are a little bit more, you could say, upbeat. My first album was a very much a ballad album, uh, where this one, Vision, has got a bit of both. And it's, it's really the paveway going forward uh, for my, my performance career. And, and they're the songs that I perform at all my concerts around the world. So it's, it's really setting the mood for the listener when they put it on and they can really understand... Uh, the, the sort of artistic background of, of uh, the musical colours that are on there. Patrick, do you write your own music or do you just play music that other people have written? I do a lot of arranging of, of previous masterpieces. I tend to like to bring some of the classics into more of a modern aspect and, okay. and, and bring some of the masses to the, to the concerts that also like classical music. Um, and some people, of course, don't. Because uh, my main idea and concept was to play, you know, great classical music. This is, you know, 10 years ago, only 15 years ago now when I started performing big concerts. I thought, look, I'll do some classical pieces. But I find the classical audiences these days, they, they are, you know, they're very much a unique crowd that follow their own trends and they go to their own concerts. But to bring a mainstream audience to a concert that is uh, classically bound yet yeah. also contemporary, it's, that's the main idea I wanted. I wanted to break, break that void. So there's a lot of my own compositional arranging in there, you could say, um, to change these classics, to bring them forward so, um, you know, everyone, you know, friends, family, young ones, old ones can all enjoy it. Fantastic. So the album's called Vision, as you say, to all good record shops, and if they haven't got it, they're not a good record shop, but there's a, <laughs> a way of buying it online, and, and you've got your own website as well, haven't you? Yeah, it's uh, www.patrickrobertsofficial.com, so they can get it on there too, or iTunes, of course, as of Monday onwards. Um, and there's a TV commercial on the Channel 9 and 7 network advertising the album at the moment, uh, saying where it's available as well. And uh, helping your Vision Australia, who uh, yes, obviously yes. do a great job. 
Patrick, yeah. good luck, and hopefully we can chat to you again in the future. And uh, I know uh, Lauren was wrapped to be part of it. Uh, he uh, really had a great time putting the album together. So uh, we, yeah. uh, if, you, if you're a friend of Lauren's, you're a friend of ours. So thanks for chatting to us. Uh, pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on. That's uh, Patrick Roberts there, uh, who's uh, just got an album out called Vision. Uh, a talented, very talented violinist, and along with the guitarist Lauren Nicholson, who we've chatted on the program. In fact, we've chatted to Lauren a couple of weeks ago when he won the award from Vision Australia. Uh, Vision out at uh, all good record shops and also on iTunes and PatrickRobertsOfficial.com. If you uh, if you want to get hold of it, do that, and you're also helping out a great cause.